I saw some children playing in a playground, a big group of kids, and it dawned on me that there's a good chance that within 20 or 30 or 40 years, some of the kids there will be telling the other kids what to do against their will and will be getting their income from those other kids who don't want to pay them that income. And of course, I'm talking about some will probably end up being government employees, politicians, enforcers, administrators for the politicians. And it made me wonder, there's this question that I would have to be able to answer satisfactorily before I could move on and say, oh, that's really cool that this is going to happen. There would have to be some system or some standard that would make it morally acceptable for one of the kids to tell the other kid what to do and to make them hand money over. And, and I'm trying to think, what, what would make it okay to have that involuntary interaction, that uh, relationship that is not based on voluntarism? And I'm, I'm not able to think of anything. Because at first I thought, well, it would be acceptable if it was an elected representative government. But then I thought, you know, the, the one kid, the victim in this particular example, what if that victim doesn't choose to participate in the, the group think thing, the, the whole election voting, all that kind of stuff? And they don't involve themselves with the government, the state. And then later, the kid who does involve himself and becomes the, the ruler, or one of, one of the rulers in the state, how does it become okay for that person to tell the other guy what to do? And, and just saying words like representative system, democracy, uh, that doesn't cut it. Like, let's, let's break this down to kindergarten level. Let's, let's build the foundation before we get fancy. And that's something that often people who don't have good foundational arguments will skip right over. It's so much easier to skip the foundation and then get into the really fancy, high fluting $20 words about the little tiny details of the banister trim. And we haven't even built the foundation yet. We've got to go back to that kindergarten level. And if we don't start back there and have that solid foundation, we just, we can't move forward. And so going back to this basic foundation, the one little kid, the one who's going to end up being a government employee, and the other little kid, the victim, what makes it okay for the victim to be victimized? It isn't, it isn't by the, the person being elected by some people other than the kid who's being victimized. If somebody's going to have have to hand money over, or if somebody is going to give money to somebody or obey their recommendations or rules or whatever, that needs to be voluntary. And it's okay if it's done in a voluntary way. If if one person says to the other, hey, I need a ditch dug and I'll give you 10 bucks an hour. And the other person says, hey, I need 10 bucks an hour and I'm happy to dig the ditch. Um, how would you like me to do it? And I understand that as the boss, you get to tell me what to do. Then absolutely acceptable. The boss says, I need you to dig it 18 inches deep, two feet wide. This is how I would like you to use the shovel. And that's okay. That is completely morally acceptable. And it's very morally acceptable because there was a contract, very clear, articulated, whether verbal or written, between those two parties. Why does the one person get $10 after an hour's worth of work? Well, because they made an agreement to that. They made an explicit agreement. And that makes that interaction okay. But then I think, well, can I apply that to the interaction of the two kids on the playground? And I can't because the victim in this case doesn't vote, doesn't sign contracts agreeing to hand over 38% of their income each year. So then what makes it acceptable? What makes it acceptable? I can't figure it out. What are your thoughts Help me figure this one out because I think it's not acceptable. Prove me wrong, please.